5.3, conditional probability. We're going to jump right in with an example here about free tacos in baseball. It says, in 2012, fans at Arizona Diamondbacks home games would win three free tacos from Taco Bell if the Diamondbacks scored six or more runs. In the 2012 season, the Diamondbacks won 41 of their 81 home games and gave away free tacos in 30 of their 81 home games. In 26 of the games, the Diamondbacks won and gave away free tacos. Let W equals a, equal a win and T equal free tacos. Choose a Diamondbacks home game at random. Part A says summarize these data in a two-way table. So we've got a couple different scenarios. Either they win or they lose, or they give free tacos, or they don't give free tacos. So let's make our two-way table based on that. So tacos, no tacos, and we have our total column. And then win versus lose, and the total row down there. So then we just need to identify what numbers go where. For starters, they won 41. They won 41 total games out of their 81 total home games. So um, total wins was 41, and then the table total should add up to 81. Um, that should tell you, by the way, how many losses there were total. There was 41 wins out of 81. That's 40 losses. And then it looks like we have 30 tacos given out total. So whether they win or lose, they give out 30 tacos, 30 taco nights, I suppose. Um, 26 of the games, they won and gave away free tacos. So that would be this cell right here, the intersection of taco and win. So that's 26. And then from there, we can pretty much figure the rest of the table out. We've got our two events actually already defined for us. W represents a win night. T represents a night where they give free tacos. So part B says find the probability that the Diamondbacks win or there are free tacos. So either or. So the correct notation there, W union T. So either they win or there's free tacos. So the formula for that, the probability of W plus the probability of T minus the overlap, so we don't count that twice. So the probability of a win in general, looks like there was 41 total wins out of 81. So 41 out of 81 for that one. Probability of tacos, looks like 30 total taco nights out of the 81. And then don't forget we got to subtract the intersection, the and statement. So that would be this cell right here, the night where they win and get tacos that's that 26 out of 81, the overlap that we don't want to count twice. So the probability is 45 out of 81 that they, that they either win or got the free tacos. Part C asks, find the probability that the D-backs win given that there are free tacos. So we got this really specific condition. So there's only so many nights where there's free tacos. But on those nights, how many games did they actually win? So let's look back up our table here. Looks like they gave tacos away 30 times during that season. And it's not like they won every single time. So 26 out of those 30, they actually won. Four out of those 30, they didn't win. So for our purposes, we're just looking at the, the nights that they had tacos. That's 30 total nights. And then 26 of those were nights that they actually won. Okay, so the probability that they won, given that it was a taco night. So there's 30 total taco nights. The probability that they win, given that there was tacos. So the total number of taco nights was 30. And then there was 26 of those 30, where they actually won. Okay, so part D actually takes a little different approach. It says find the probability that there are free tacos given that the D-backs win. So the probability that there are free tacos given that the D-backs won the game. So they actually didn't give free tacos out every time they won. 
So if you look at the two-way table, they won 41 games. So out of the total wins, we're looking at just the 41. And then they gave tacos out 26 out of those 41 times. So this is a little different scenario, a little different probability. 41 total wins, and of those wins, they gave tacos out 26 times. Okay, so the probability that they got tacos, given that it was actually a night that they won. The total number of wins, so this is going to the denominator of our fraction, was 41. And there was 26 times out of those 41 that they actually gave the tacos away. So these two probabilities are a little bit different than the first one we did. The first one was really general. It was just out of the whole group, how many games did they either win or give free tacos? Part C and D, they both had very specific conditions. Part C, we're looking at only the games that the tacos got given away. Part D, we're looking at only games that they actually won. That's why the totals are different. Our denominators are different. Part E, and this is what we're going to get after, conditional probability. So what is conditional probability? So for our purpose, we're going to look for probabilities that occur under a specific condition. So we've already done this twice. Part C, the condition was it had to be a taco game. There's 30 of those. Part D, the condition was they had to win. There's 41 of those. So that was our denominator. That was our total outcome. And then the green part here, is there a formula for conditional probability? As a matter of fact, there is. And as a matter of fact, it's on the AP formula sheet. And here's how it looks. Probability of A, and you have this vertical line here, and then B. So A and B are two events. And this vertical line, that's the notation for the phrase, like, given that. So the probability that A happens, given that B has already occurred. And here's the formula. Equals the intersection, so the probability of A and B, divided by the probability of B. And this is exactly how it looks on the AP formula sheet. So one more time, conditional probability. This is our new notation. Probability that A happens, given that B has already occurred. So B is our condition. That's equal to the probability they both occur at the same time, A and B, divided by the probability of B. Okay, let's look a little closer. The next blank there, when we were trying to find the probability that one event will happen, that one event will happen under the condition that some other event is already known to have occurred, then that's what we're doing when we try to find a conditional probability. In the green box here, the definition, the probability that one event happens, given that another event is already known to have happened, is called a conditional probability. And it says, suppose that we know that event A has happened, then the probability that event B happens, given that event A has happened, is denoted by probability of B given A. So that's B with a vertical line A. And I do want to make a note here, the correct order matters. So like the event that's already occurred is actually the second event here. So you can think of the second event as being sort of like the total number of outcomes. That's what you're looking at. That's our specific condition. Okay, so the big idea is we're no longer looking at the table total, for example. If I can just revisit the Diamondbacks example one more time. For conditional probability, we weren't looking at 81 for our total. We were looking at taco games, so 30 was our total. Or games that they won, so 41 was our total. So those were our specific conditions uh, that we used, like in the denominator for our probability. Okay, and then just one more pointer um, on that same note that order does matter. So if we read it like this for the first one, the probability that A happens, given that B has already occurred, 
So probability of A given B is equal to the intersection, so the probability that A and B occur together, divided by the probability of B. And then let's get the order straight if it goes this way. So the probability that B happens, given that A has already occurred, so the probability of B given A is equal to the intersection divided by the probability of A. So notice that second event, that goes on the denominator there. So the second event is actually our condition. So we're operating under the idea that that second event has already occurred. All right, that's all for these notes. We're going to finish off the rest of the examples in class, so I'll see you then.